Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the hubbub that's been going on with Bamboo Lab and their firmware update uh, that is going to be coming out. So uh, as you see here on the 16th of January, they released a blog post uh, talking about the new firmware update uh, for a new authorization control system that they're calling Bamboo Connect. Uh, they've uh, done uh, a couple updates to this blog on the 17th and on the 20th. Uh, but uh, in general, um, what this is going to do, this is new firmware is going to, uh, it's to help mitigate any risk of remote hacks and printer exposure issues that have happened in the past and also lower the risk of abnormal traffic or attacks. That seems pretty important if you ask me. Also, we'll look at why that is a key thing for them uh, here going forward. Uh, but we'll do that in a few minutes. Um, right now, uh, st well, starting on the 17th of January, um, you had access to the beta firmware. Uh, personally, I'm not going to update mine until it's the official release of the firmware. Um, I just don't feel like messing around with beta firmware at the moment. And also, I use uh, Bamboo Studio uh, for my slicer. And uh, if you use Bamboo Studio for your slicer, this whole thing doesn't matter to you, like what, what they're uh, talking about. This is really going to affect people that are using the Bamboo Handy uh, and uh, Orca Slicer users or, or other people that use some other you know, um, slicer software that connects with the, uh, with their printer. Uh, if we go, um, back here, uh, there's been a lot of, uh, videos here in the last couple of days about people talking about what could be the reasoning behind this, uh, update. And so yesterday on the 20th, Bamboo came out with a, another blog post here with some updates and showing that these claims are the false are false ones, um, that you know Bamboo Labs going to remotely disable the printer and brick it. Uh, firmware updates will block your printer's ability to print. Um, AMS functionality will be restricted, uh, and can't use third party filament. Uh, Bamboo uh, firmware contains trojans and backdoors for unauthorized remote control which I think is the funniest one of this list because this is really what they're trying to prevent other people from being able to do. Um, but we'll, like I said, we'll get into that. Uh, the printers have a limited or time kill switch that disables them after a certain period. Uh, that one, I don't understand why they would do that uh, because if people knew that they had a planned obsolescence in them, you wouldn't have anybody returning. And, Bamboo has such a market share in the 3D printing community at this point, you, you'd cut your nose off to spite your face. Um, so I don't see that, that happening. Um, that all the 3D files are being monitored, duplicated, or stolen. I don't think they really care about people's flexi dragons, personally. Um, and a subscription will be mandatory to use the printer. Uh, I, I don't see them ever doing that either. Uh, what I could see possibly would be if they did a subscription for a version of like the Bamboo Handy app or something like that. I, I could see something like that possibly, but, uh, you know, in general, they're not going to make a, uh, a subscription to be able to use the printer, especially if you've already paid for the printer. So uh, anyhow, um, they've they've run into some issues here. So um, uh, they, they were talking about, people have been talking about the uh, uh, Orca Slicer um, and, and being able to use not use it. So uh, reading through the stuff, they've actually been working with Orca Slicer um, throughout their, their creation of the Bamboo Connect uh, to help uh, streamline being able to use Orca Slicer in there and that it'll function properly with not a whole lot of issues. Um, the, uh, other thing though, is about the Panda touch. So if you're not familiar with what the Panda touch is, um, big tree tech came out with this about a year or so ago, 
and it's a colored screen that works with the P1S or the P-series um, printers since they only have a two-color display. And uh, um, it, it, this is this is pretty this is an interesting little uh, um, segment of, of this because uh, you know they say that they reached out to them as soon as they became aware of it, and they warned them that using the exploited MQTT protocols was unsustainable and would place customers in an awkward situation once we updated the system. So they've known for well over a year that this update was going to be coming. Um, and, and they've been working on it. Uh, all the all this communication occurred before the mass shipment of the Panda Touch. However, they chose to ignore the warnings, and unfortunately, you know, now Panda Touches aren't going to work anymore if somebody upgrades the firmware. That kind of seems to me like that's on Big Tree Tech and not Bamboo. Mm -hmm. um, so. Uh, you know, there, there, there's problems here for a lot of folks. Um, now, if we go back here, so this is why I think they had to do this. Um, if we go down in the original post, uh, we go down here to the facts section that says, why is this change needed? Uh, it talks about the security of uh, security attacks that they've been getting. Um, they've detected peaks of up to 30 million unauthorized requests in a day. Uh, of people actually trying to be malicious with the printers. Uh, if we click on this, it actually takes you to their wiki um, of the Abnormal Cloud Service Access Report uh, and gives you some ab notable instances of abnormal access. Um, starting in September of 2023, uh, Maker World experienced a DDoS attack uh, lasting approximately an hour, uh, which resulted in service-wide abnormalities and disruptions. Uh, June, uh, they had 760,000 uh, abnormal requests. August, 90,000. October, 13 million. October, 1.8 million. October, 286,000. November, 1 million. December, 110,000 requests in 10 minutes. And January 8th, 10 million abnormal requests in 15 minutes. Somebody is coming for their systems, so they have to do something about it. Um, and if you uh, look down here in like some of the the improvements that they were doing, this kind of shows you why, um, especially this December uh, 2023 one. Uh, this measure protected devices from the cloud from malicious script implementation during 3MF file parsing. Attackers were thereby thwarted from constructing malicious 3MF files to execute harmful scripts. So they were there. There's people out there trying to take control of your machines um, through their application and overheating it or, or you know thermal runaways. Who knows? I mean, there people are out there trying to do stuff to those machines, and Bamboo Lab is trying to prevent them from being able to do that. Uh, so, uh, where this is interesting here is, so this, this one here was in, uh, September of 2023, where they had this attack lasting about an hour. All right. If we go back here, um, here we go, we'll go here. And if we go back, there was a time frame uh, back in August. So August 15th. Uh, to be exact, between the hours of 10.03 p.m. and 11.10 p.m., and again from 12.11 to 12.23, they experienced an unexpected cloud outage. I wonder why they, expect, they experienced an unexpected cloud outage. Now, it doesn't say anything in that other post about this particular instance, but this is right before they got hit for an hour straight, um, with another DDoS attack. So could we be seeing something? I think so. So should we be really worried about this? Personally, I don't think so. Um, especially if you use Bamboo Studio. If you use Bamboo Studio, just keep on going like you're going. It's not affecting anything. If you use uh, um, 
work a slicer, you're probably going to have a little bit of a um, time frame where things act a little bit wonky uh, until they get it uh, brought up to date and in connecting through the Bamboo Connect uh, program. So uh, I'm going to put a link to all these blog posts and such like that in the description so you can read them if you like. Um, a print farm uh, software, they're already working on it. Uh, so look, we were fully aware that print farm management software could be affected by this update. That's why we de developed a dedicated tool specifically designed for farm management software. Uh, before the launch, we contacted several farm management software vendors and integration is already in progress. So they're already working with the folks to make sure that this stuff works the way it's supposed to and isn't a pain in the butt for all the users. So um, my personal opinion, like I said earlier, is just continue to use the, uh, um, the, the existing firmware until the, they go through the beta. If you use uh, Bamboo Studio, then uh, um, as your slicer, update it. Who cares? Uh, it's not going to affect you. Uh, if you're using Orca, I would continue using the existing firmware until they have done the update. And if you use a Panda Touch, I would not do any of the update because you're going to lose your Panda Touch. So um, the... I mean, that, that's just going to be what it is. Uh, they're trying to prevent the people from getting into the systems, which I completely understand. And you, I don't want people accessing my printers remotely and making them do anything malicious. So I, I'm down for it. Whatever works is good for me. So uh, if you like this type of uh, content and information, um, please give me a, uh, a like and a subscribe. And uh, we'll keep at it. It's uh, it's interesting to see what's going on. But I think some people are just blowing it out of proportion. So let's uh, watch and continue to figure it out. Until then, peace out, sauerkraut.